Hi everybody, it's Hiroko from Asian Boss. One of the more curious facts about Japanese society is that it is culturally and ethnically homogenous, with over 98% of Japanese citizens being considered ethnic Japanese. And comparatively speaking, there is only a very small proportion of citizens who are either non-Japanese or have mixed Japanese blood known as halfus. While many who are born in Japan speak Japanese and contribute to the Japanese economy, their Japanese-ness is contested and considered by many as not being fully Japanese. But this creates both unique challenges and unexpected advantages to understand better what they actually face. Today we are going to meet three Hahu Japanese to discuss their experiences of living in Japan. Curious? Let's meet our guests and talk more. Thanks for joining us today. To start things off, would you introduce yourself to everyone? My name is Shunki, Shunki Egawa, and I'm turning 27. I'm a musician. I'm Seon Tanaka. I'm currently 19 years old, and I am a fashion model for a living and a student. I'm Alicia, and I'm somewhere in my 20s. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm currently a PhD student. So we brought you all in today because you're considered hafu. Uh, before we start things off, uh, would you explain what hafu means? Well, half <laughs> is a term used in Japan that describes uh, someone who is half Japanese and half another country. So my other half is from Bahamas. I was born and raised in Bahamas mm -hmm. for 15 years, so I spent mm -hmm. my, basically my whole life there. And then uh, since I'm only 19 now, I've only been here for four years from high school. I'm half Italian, but I was born and raised in the U.S., so I don't know anything about Italy. Um, mine is Korean. I was born and raised in Korea. Like, I stayed there for 20 years. Wow. So, I actually didn't have that much chances to speak Japanese. So, are you considered a foreigner in here because of your background? I don't think, because of how I look, they don't really treat me as a, like a foreigner, because like, they don't really recognize me as a half mm -hmm. unless I tell them. So like, but right after I tell them, they kind of treat me as a foreigner kind of bit. And you? I would say for me, I'm probably like the <laughs> complete opposite. Yeah. So at first, people would think that I'm like full foreigner. But when I start speaking Japanese, then they would understand that, oh, okay, well, he can speak Japanese. So that means he must be half. And oh. then I get treated more like a Japanese person. And your family name is Tanaka. Which is very Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I go to like the doctor's office, mm. because they would call you by your last name, mm -hmm. like everyone would be stunned because they don't expect me to stand up <laughs> when they call Tanaka. They might think that I'm like Johnson or like, you know, <laughs> some other thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know it's a bit too personal question, but like how did your parents meet? Do you know about that? I heard that my mom and dad mm -hmm. met in Korea mm. and my mom translated for him. Because she spoke Japanese and Korean both. So my mom was um, in the entertaining, entertainment section of a hotel. So she oh. would always have to be moved around to different countries. Mm -hmm. And then she eventually ended up in Bahamas, wow. where she like, met my dad. And then they, they got along and they, well, they <laughs> started dating. And then they, they got married. They got married first. Uh -huh. And then like a few years down the line, then they had me. And how about you? <laughs> um, I think my mom and dad met in Hawaii mm. um, and my mm. mom was on vacation in Hawaii and mm. I think my dad was working at the hotel but they met I think their groups of friends like kind of like came together and I think my dad asked my mom for her I don't know I guess not digits because I don't think they had so I think um, my mom went back to Japan after mm her trip to Hawaii and they wrote letters back and forth oh. and I think he proposed to her in a letter. Wow! wow. <laughs> Goosebumps! Yeah. Wow! That is a surprise. Yeah, right? And then, yeah, and then she went to Hawaii, they got married and I was born. So, how did your grandparents react to your parents' love? Hearing from like my mom, like stories from my mom, like she said that she didn't feel very welcomed by my dad's parents, especially my grandma. I guess like they were kind of Italians tend to also Ital keep the Italian bloodline I as well. See. Like Italian is like a very long history, and like they tend to have like a lot of pride about being Italian. So I think the fact that my dad chose to marry outside of that, it was a little difficult for them to accept. Um, I don't think that they said it directly, mm. but I think my mom just felt 
isolated a lot of the times. And yeah. I just heard that my mom's side grandparents, they hated about the marriage because they're Koreans. Uh -huh. And Koreans always had this conflict between Japan uh. and Korea. So like, yeah, I heard that they really had a difficult time to get yeah, along. Yeah, yeah. So like my grandparents, my mom's grandparents, they didn't want to see my parents until they got the first child, which is my older brother. So my older brother was the trigger to be, ah. get along. My family inside of Bahamas, like they didn't really care that much because they're, <laughs> they're like, they're island people. So they're like a big family. My, my dad is, a fa is like inside of a family of six. So he has two other brothers and three sisters. So to the Bahamian people, they were just like, oh, just more family. Oh. But to my Japanese side, they heavily disagreed with him. Oh. So like, I'd, like around the start, my dad actually received like a blood sign letter from my granddad. So as in like he, he cut his finger and then like sealed the, the envelope with his like, with his blood and said like, leave my daughter alone. But my dad was just like, oh, well, that's okay. <laughs> my, dad was, my dad didn't even like think twice about it. He was just like, nah, I'm still gonna be with her. Oh my so, God. so there was that. He's and so cool. Yeah, my dad was just like <laughs> chill about it. Because he, he, he was just focused on like uh, my mom. Mm. So oh. even when he came to Japan a lot of times before their marriage, mm -hmm. like my, my, my grandparents over here, like they would just not be home at the time that they came. Mm. So like my dad and my granddad met each other for the first time at like my dad's marriage and at the marriage my granddad asked my dad the question you must hate me so much mm -hmm. like you must really hate me because you haven't like i'm always avoiding you and stuff mm -hmm. but my dad responded with how can i hate someone i've never met mm -hmm. right so since then they understood like their philosophies i guess are like mm -hmm. the same and then they became like really they became like best friends <laughs> i don't know why they came they became they went from avoiding oh. to like being best friends and then even until my granddad like passed away like the last person he wanted to speak to was like my dad because they were just like that close oh. wow. and no, that was like, no, so like his actual daughter well i mean his daughter was there too but like <laughs> but like it's just that my dad and him like they, they just like really got along like just that good well do you feel like there are more and more half of people in japan i think so mm -hmm. yeah like, like I've said, seen, yeah. yeah. Like the kids, I yeah. see kids. Oh, I've seen a lot of kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. more. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Why do you think like that's happening? Is it just because like Japanese people actually admires the half? Yeah. Mm. And the sure. half kids yeah, are half really kid. cute, yeah. and mm. like they really expect the half kids to be good looking, cute, pretty. Mm. I also think like more people are coming into Japan too. Yeah, so like there's true. just like more races, mm -hmm. there's more opportunity to meet new mm -hmm. people. And I think Japanese people are also venturing yeah, outside yeah. of Japan mm -hmm. more than before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> I think so. So I think it's there's true. just like more opportunity to meet different mm -hmm. kinds of people. And I think it's also becoming, I think, more accepted, mm -hmm. you know, to, you know, have mixed couples and mixed kids. And, and I think it's just maybe just increasing. I see. And yeah, like when we turn on the TV in here, we see so many half models, yeah. right? Like you said, like they're on TV and stuff often, but I feel like the half people who are on TV are those pretty yeah. and yeah, beautiful yeah, yeah, yeah. people. So it's not necessarily yeah. that we all half people are beautiful. It's yeah. just like it's just like Japanese yeah. or any other race. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very, <laughs> seriously, yeah. seriously. It's okay. No, like, every yeah, time no, when no. I tell them that I'm a half, people will be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, the reaction supposed to mean? <laughs> 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 but, but it's true though, like, uh. they really expect the half people to be good looking or pretty. Mm -mm. True. And when I, like, when the person's not actually that pretty or good looking, mm. the people will have a weird reaction about that. Is there any half hierarchy here in Japan? It's like a lot of my friends are half Filipino mm. and half Japanese and they said that they were envious of the fact that I'm half Italian because they mm. feel that they have to hide their Filipino side mm. because they feel that they're not accepted as well in Japan, so they say that they're half Spanish because it sounds yeah. better. It sounds better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that was kind of like the first time that I had yeah. heard something like that. So it's like very possible, like yeah. when I hear everyone's stories, that maybe it is like half Caucasian is mm -hmm. getting a little mm -hmm. bit, like, I guess, like on TV, and mm -hmm. it's more considered yeah. maybe like an ideal, yeah. which is like a 
like a very strange transition for mm. me because in the U.S., especially where I grew up, it mm. was literally like all Caucasians and then mm. me and my mom. Mm. So like we were always kind of like isolated and a little bit discriminated against. In the U.S., being half Japanese, you're not considered Caucasian. So mm. white privilege was not something that I was experienced. If anything, I was like bullied all the time. Like mm. we got, when I was with my mom, we were ignored in restaurants, you know, like, and I get viewed as this completely Asian. Like when I would go to restaurants with my mm. dad, who mm. is white, like mm. I would make sure to say in front of the waitress, dad, because I didn't want them to think he's on a date with like a young oh. Asian girl. Like that happens a lot. So mm. I always like have to like, I. White people don't view me as white, if oh. that makes sense. And so like, I never felt like a part of like the Italians or like the white people. It's so, like, when I came here, I'm like, I'm one of you guys, I'm Japanese. And everyone's like, you look white. I'm like, what's happening? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like, I was like, uh, I don't understand. So, yeah, yeah. I feel you. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, I mean, in Bahamas, it's like the same thing, right? Because even though like, I'm pretty dark, but then everyone is like, like this color, like not to say as a joke, <laughs> but it's like people look like pretty dark. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But people are actually like pretty black. Uh -huh. So like when people see me, uh -huh. they don't treat me as like a Bahamian, local. yeah, as a local. Oh. Like they obviously think like, oh, he mixed, he's mixed with something, uh. right? And then they, and then like some people even just call me like straight like white boy or like Asian mm. boy, you know, mm. even though I look like this. They're just like Asian boy, you know. Oh, Asian and, uh, boy yeah. makes yeah. sense, yeah. but it's an Asian boy. Uh -huh. Like it's just like that. Even though I look like this, they can like uh -huh. tell that there's something different. What kind of stereotypes do Japanese people have towards half people? Personally, because I'm half black, then people would just think, oh, then he must be good at basketball, he must be good at running. And I mean, but that's just depending on the other race, you know? Uh, I don't know if this is kind of a stereotype or not, but then like, when I tell them that I'm half Korean, they think, I don't know why, but then they first think it's North Korea. So like, they'll be like, asking me about how North Koreans are living and how they're whatever the things about the North Korea, but I don't know. Of <laughs> you know? course! I w I'm from South Korea, uh -huh. and I don't really know anything about North Korea, but then like, you know like how a couple of years ago there were a lot of troubles between Japan and North Korea, and still mm -hmm. they're going on, mm -hmm. but then like, I think that's the reason why they have more, more about North Koreans uh, in their than mind. South Korean. It's because like, now that I've changed my Japanese, like they wouldn't notice that I'm half Korean mm -hmm. anymore, but then like, I used to have a, this Korean accent, a really strong Korean accent in my Japanese, so like they would just notice it right away. And they would just go like, are you from North Korea? Are you like a spy? I'm like, ah. And like, when I tell them that I'm a half Korean, they think like I eat kimchi every day. And that's the reason why I have a like better skin. Oh. <laughs> so like people always ask me, do you eat kimchi every day? I'm like, <laughs> I mean, you know, that's a stereotype. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh Maybe God. some, yeah, not every day though, you know. It's the same for black people, man. Chicken, you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 chicken, you know, it's the same. Grape soda. Yeah. Um, Great drink. The US, like, eat hamburgers every day, yeah. hamburgers every day. Like, uh, so what, what do you think? I think maybe in general, like we mentioned before, like half people are considered beautiful or pretty or something, yeah. which I think is mm -hmm. totally perpetuated by the media because that's just like the type of people, half people that we are exposed to more mm -hmm. often. Right. And also the character of that person tends to be a little bit bakakera. They're not stupid in real mm. life or anything like that, but they, you play that character like, and where they ask you to be a little bit more like aggressive or things that Japanese people wouldn't typical uh, Japanese wouldn't say mm. like even when I was in an agency and I like talked about po potentially doing TV like I said at the time like I don't feel comfortable enough with my Japanese because I'm still learning mm -hmm. mm. they said actually it's more interesting it's funnier if you mess up so actually don't study Japanese yeah, so like that's yeah, kind yeah, of like yeah, the image yeah. that they wanted to put on TV uh, so sometimes it's like I wish I could change that so in general how do Japanese people treat half people I think it's gonna be different from you guys because like they wouldn't really notice that I'm a half person unless I tell them that I'm mm. half. When I tell them that I'm a half Korean, they admire for like 10 seconds and after 10 seconds they were like, but ah, oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you look mm, like, like a Korean, maybe, maybe not, you know. <laughs> so sometimes like for me, because I am so close with my mom and mm. because I feel very connected to my Japanese roots, like sometimes it makes me feel a little lonely, like, mm. oh, like, why won't you see me as one of you? Like, why do you have to like be so careful around me? Mm. But I know that it's all with good intention, mm. which actually makes it harder to like say, say something, something about it. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, I, I don't yeah, want yeah, to offend yeah, them either because I know they're just trying to be yeah. nice to me. Like, yeah. like one time 
I had a, a, ba- a boyfriend in mm-hmm. Japan, like it was a long time ago, but mm-hmm. I went to visit his parents mm-hmm. and they knew that I was half Italian, so they ordered me pizza while they ate <sighs> Japanese food. And I knew that they were just trying to be kind, <laughs> but at the like, same time, I was wow. like, oh, I can eat other foods, <laughs> pizza. Mm. And so it was kind of just like that. Like, I knew that they were just trying to be welcoming. Yeah, like, yeah, we ordered yeah. you pizza because you're a habit. <laughs> and you're from the U.S. And I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> but I really want to eat the udon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, oh. It's hard because I feel like really most of the time, they really don't have bad intentions. Mm-hmm. Like, they're really just trying to be kind. It's mm-hmm. more like, like you said, like a lack of ex- like a knowledge or experience. Mm-hmm. Like, it's my first time. Mm-hmm. So, like, they try to be careful and they try to be kind. Only, like, one time I've experienced, like, straight up, I think, like, experience, like, your half. Like, I wasn't allowed into a restaurant with my half friends. Mm-hmm. So, they were like, oh, Whoa. like, no guiding. And we were like, we're in Japanese. Japan? Yeah, in Japan. And, like, my other two friends were born and raised in Japan, too. Mm-hmm. But they don't look very Japanese, I guess. Like, the type of half that they were, like, they looked mm. more, like, foreign. Yeah. And so, like, we weren't allowed in the restaurant. But, like, you guys oh. were speaking them in Japanese. In Japanese. But they still answer us in English. Oh, my God! <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> that happens oh, a lot. Yeah, that happens oh. a lot. Like, even at Disneyland, they'll be like, I know me just got how many people? And I'll be like, Sunny and this, like, go to number three. I'm like, I just spoke to you in Japanese. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know why, but, yeah. Oh. So, I think they're trying to be kind. Like, they looked at my face and maybe they assumed oh. I couldn't. Speak Japanese, even though I was just speaking to them. I don't yeah. know, Japanese. Maybe they I were funny. It yeah, <laughs> I really think it's mostly kindness, yeah. except for the restaurant. But uh, yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. I went to a yakitori place in Shibuya with my American friends and my mm-hmm. Japanese friends. So some of us can read Japanese and some of us couldn't. So we asked for an English menu and a Japanese menu, and we noticed that the prices on the English menu were two times higher. What? Mm. And so we were like trying to figure out like is there a difference in the amount that they're giving or something like it couldn't possibly be that they're just like charging foreigners more money. So but we asked the waiter we're like why are the prices different? Mm-hmm. And he called over his manager and his manager started yelling at us in English like tax tax. We're like tax like <laughs> tax. isn't that like added at the end yeah. of like the yeah. check anyway? So we're like what does that tax. mean? And he was like foreigners don't know how to play, pay tax. And we're like. What? Like if it's written in the in the check, like if it's included, of course we'll pay it. So mm-hmm. they kind of got like found out that they were charging uh, foreigners more money because mm-hmm. usually you wouldn't ask for both menus, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. But we just happened to mm-hmm. order both. So like, I don't know like about you guys. So because I'm half, like if I go with my Japanese friends or non-Japanese friends to restaurants, I'll feel the difference in like mm-hmm. the service because they'll view me as a foreigner or as a Japanese depending on what language I'm speaking in or like, who I'm isn't with. Isn't it illegal to do that? I'm pretty sure. That's just why like he kind of like freaked out and like yelled at us like. Tax. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have any advantages that normal Japanese people don't have? If your Japanese doesn't come out right, because if you look half, they might just be like, "Oh, okay, you're just half." So yeah. that's like a pass. The half pass. Uh, the half pass. Half pass. The half pass. It's like a freebie when you don't know, or you make a mistake, and like mm-hmm. for example, the language or not knowing the culture or something, mm-hmm. you can kind of be like. Oh. It's because I'm half, I don't yeah, really know. Yeah, and then yeah. they're more likely to be more forgiving towards yeah, yeah. Yeah. your actions if you don't know something, but there's kind of like a limit to it. Too. Yeah. Like you yeah. can't really like <laughs> use it in like but every you situation. Can't use it You're not supposed to use it every time. I see. And then there's like, say, job opportunities because I guess we're half as well. Mm. I mean, because of their background, you know, like, say, oh, yeah, you I were see, like, see, you know, because yeah, yeah. your background yeah, yeah. is like, you were able to get like the English job. Right, right, and right. then because I'm half, I'm able to be like a model now. You know. In terms of your identity, have you had big struggle with like growing up? Have you thought like, ah, oh, who am I exactly um, or something? Yeah, every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think every now. half goes through it, yeah, right? Because they, they, they think like, what country do I really yeah. belong to, right? Uh, because it's like both countries, someone's saying something about you. Exactly. So it's like, then mm. which country do I really belong mm. to? So and depending on the person who's like looking at you too, they view in a completely different yeah, way. Yeah. Like it's always that stereotype. Like, I think you're always eating hamburgers. And I was like, I barely eat hamburgers. <laughs> like I don't know like why you think mm. that but yeah, so it's kind of like that stereotype also kinda of gets like mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's yeah, a lot of stereotypes. And Bahamas is like pretty weird actually because like mm-hmm. for bah- for Bahamian people mm-hmm. and when they think Asian, they think everything is just Chinese. Right. right? Right, so it's like when when I say like, oh yeah, I'm half Japanese, and then they say like, where in China is that, right? And then I'm like, <laughs> oh okay, God. right. But like, it's stereo, but they just don't know really. So they say like, do you eat like rat and dog and stuff? So like, I'd be like, hmm, you know, I'm just like, okay, no, I don't, but you know. 
I think every half goes through identity crisis at one point inside their life, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, to deal with it, every half does a certain like do, does different things. Like maybe you get your mind off of it, like yeah. with hobbies, or you try to like like not just hobbies, but there's other ways to like deal with it as well. Some people go to therapy because like mm -hmm. it, they want someone to list, like listen to their problems. So I mean, in terms of like how to deal with it, that would be different with every half. But the fact is, every half does go through an identity crisis at one point in their life. When you were young, how aware were you that you're not fully Japanese? When I was young, mm -hmm. I didn't know that I was part Japanese. I thought I was full Korean first, because I was born and raised there. And my dad kind of visited me sometimes. So like, I didn't think he was a foreigner, you know, like, I just thought that mm -hmm. he wasn't really good with Korean, mm -hmm. but didn't think him as a foreign person. But then like, all of a sudden, like, when I went to the elementary school, I, I had to go to a Japanese school that was in Korea, and I didn't speak any Japanese. I thought everyone knew how to speak Korean, but then like, when I went there, like, people didn't know how to speak Korean at all, and they speak different language, and my parents will tell me that they're Japanese people from Japan. And I'm like, why am I here, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, mm. and then like, I finally realized that I was part Japanese and mm -hmm. didn't really try to learn Japanese because I, I was just a first grade, you know? Like I wouldn't want to study a language, mm -hmm. you know? But then like, just eventually just got along with them and mm -hmm. learned how to speak. I would say that I'm like the opposite because it's like oh. it's kind of obvious for me because <laughs> because I mean just inside of my house it's just like very black dude very yellow person you know what I mean? see. so for me I had and then my mom would constantly speak Japanese to me like she would use no English to me so mm. she, she only oh. speaks Japanese to me and then my dad only speaks English to me oh. and then like say my skin complexion is already different from like everyone around me mm -hmm. Plus my hair as well. I would say like my hair when I used to do it younger, I haven't done it like today, mm -hmm. but if I say wash it and gel it properly, it would just fall down. It would just be wavy, oh. you know? Oh. So it would just be like actual like half. So it's not like fully curly and like, mm -hmm. like hard and it's not fully straight. It's just like wavy and it's just oh. like curly. So I had to be like aware of that from a child. And then everyone else around me is just like saying that I'm Asian from like a oh. child. You know? I don't know. Like I said, my surrounding, there were like no other Asian people. So I kind of actually thought I was like full Asian. I don't know why, even though I had a white dad. <laughs> mm. Like, but I didn't look like Caucasian compared to my other friends and stuff. Mm. I looked different and they would mention that I looked different. Like my eyes are smaller or something. Like mm. they would be like, can you see? Like, yes, I can see. <laughs> oh, did Whoa. they do yeah. this to you? Yeah, exactly. Oh They're my like, God. I'm Asian. I'm like, so I kind of mm. really thought of myself as full Asian for a long time oh. because, like, I don't know, I wasn't really viewed as Italian anyway. Mm. So. I think it was when I started visiting Japan as I was older, like maybe in high school. Like I noticed that um, my clothing, like my style and stuff was a little bit different. And I couldn't speak the language at all when mm. I would come to Japan. So mm. my mom would translate for me mm. all the time and people would just make a lot of comments like, Oh, like you don't look Japanese, like mm -hmm. or your style is very American mm -hmm. or stuff like that. So then that's when I was like, wait, <laughs> like what's happening? So like it, it kind of things started happening in high school and I was a little bit more aware of how people were viewing me. Like when I was younger, I just didn't care. I was just like mm -hmm. wearing what I wanted to wear and stuff. But like as you get older, you know, people start making comments, especially in Japan, like, mm -hmm. oh, like your clothing style is different. Your nose is high or something like, mm -hmm. like those kinds of comments were coming and I was like, what's happening? So mm -hmm. I think that's when I started like feeling, okay, I might not be accepted fully as Japanese here. Mm -hmm. So maybe I really do look half or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Well, how did it make you feel when you like realize or when you think of that, how, how does it make you feel? I mean, I would like surprised. So say like, in Bahamas, I would, I'd, people would say that I eat rat and dog. And then in Japan, mm. when I used, to, I used to come like every summer, and I remember there was this one time that I um, went to my friend's house and his uh, grandmother was there. And his grandmother didn't look really excited to meet me, right? Oh. right? And then like, at the time, I don't think she knew I probably spoke Japanese. Um. So she took like, my friend into the other room and then said like, 
at the time I didn't know what it meant mm. but then like a year or two later when I like thought about it I was like huh that's pretty racist but I was like oh <laughs> yeah I was like huh that was pretty racist I was like okay but then like when I realized it like one or two years down the line it was like okay I'm I don't belong to Bahamas but I don't belong to Japan either mm. so it's just like I have to stay like in the middle basically that's like when I really realized yeah yeah I totally know how you feel yeah. like, I like, think that's like, yeah, like the half connection is so important yeah, because yeah. I feel like we understand each other. Like yeah. we, we're all three different kinds of mixes, but yeah. it's like we can understand each other's like yeah. mm -hmm. hearts. That sounds so cheesy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so cheesy. Yeah, yeah. But it's like yeah. we've all gone through different experiences mm -hmm. and probably different degrees mm -hmm. of experiences. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like okay, but we are all like not really belonging anywhere. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, what's yeah. belonging here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're just Why like, am yeah. I so corny today? Yeah, we're just like here. We're just like here. We're just right here. Yeah. I see. Yeah. So in what ways do you feel like a Japanese person and a non-Japanese person? Now that I've been in Japan for five years, I think like when I was in this izakaya working, um, people used to call me a nickname. Oh. Ayama, Ayamari Samurai. <laughs> <laughs> Ayamari Samurai. Uh -huh. So like um, whenever there was a problem going on with the customers, I, I went there to apologize for them. But then that was the first thing that I thought what Japanese people are like. Mm. Like they apologize a lot. But true. Apologize a lot, meaning like, but then they're really thinking about the other person, you know, like trying to be nice to another person. But also it means like they're avoiding the conflict. Mm. They want to finish it as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. So like when I'm apologizing, I feel like I'm being a Japanese person. <laughs> I see, I see. Not, not actually facing the conflict, but uh, apologize it and let's finish it here. Like, that's, that's when I feel like I'm a Japanese person. I mean, I guess when you have to speak like Keigo and you have to like uh, do like tatemai. Yes. Like, because you're basically creating like a wall between yourself and the other person, right. which I wasn't really used to when I was in Bahamas. I would just like mm. talk to everyone like how, like just friendly, mm. you know. But in Japan, you have to like treat like ranks yeah. in a certain type of way so mm. coming to japan and learning that i understood like okay i have to treat people in this type of way i see because I see. you don't really get to have that connection with the person that you want to right mm. yeah. yeah so like i mean i don't like it but it's like it's like something that you kind of have to yeah do yeah, to yeah. Do i guess i would say like after moving to japan i think i picked up a lot of mannerisms mm. that i like yeah cool <gasps> Yeah, yeah. In English, you'd be like, oh, thanks. Like, I've been yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. But in Japanese, like, no. Yeah, you no, have to be like, no. Yeah. You have yeah. to be like more humble. Yeah. And this, like, movement, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, like in the US, it'd be like, this something smell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I don't need it. Like, this, like, mannerism that I've noticed, like, I'm always going like this. Like, even though I'm talking on the phone, like, if I talk on the phone in Japanese, I go, hi, no one's there. But I'm like, hi, what can But if I talk in English, okay, got it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this. So, like, I feel like my mannerisms have changed a little bit. Like, how about, like, when you feel like, actually, I don't feel like a Japanese. Yeah. What's the moment of that? I think it's when I decide that I don't care what people think of me. Because mm. in Japan, like, I yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. I try so yeah. hard to fit in all the time mm. and, like, yeah. wear, like, the proper, like, clothing that, like, Japanese girls wear and, like, try to fit the style. And sometimes it's just like, you know what? I don't care. And then that's when I feel like, okay, I'm in Alicia mode, not Fumi mode. Mm. <laughs> so, like, I'll, like, <laughs> switch, like, there's always, like, people say, like, there's an Alicia and there's a Fumi. And, like, Fumi's mm. very, like, like very, uh, like, okay, oh. and like I try to be very like conservative with like mm. everything, but That's sometimes it. Alicia's just like, I don't care. Nah. Mm. Nah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, then yeah. I prefer Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you would. <laughs> when I'm with you, I feel pretty like I'm being like my American self. Like, oh, like, I see, like, I see. like if Hiroko says something and I disagree, I'd be like, yeah, but I disagree. Hey. But like with my Japanese friends, I'd be like, oh, no, no, hold on, I, I see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see. yeah, yeah. yeah. So. If you were like, if you will have the chance, and you can born again, would you want to be a half again? I would say, yeah, I would say yes. Because, okay, how I think now, I've never once in my life blamed my parents for like having mm. me be born half, right? It's, I mean, a lot of halves look for something to blame. Why do I have to get this racism? Why do I have to get this, this, like all of this, like, just difficulties. smack, difficulties, mm, yeah. right? 
but it's it's really based it's just society really you mm -hmm. know so if if people would just if a lot of other halves would understand like you shouldn't really be shouting at your parents i know if some halves would actually like blame their parents like because like they don't they don't want to have like they don't want to be different you know? i see they, they want to feel yeah. like yeah. they belong they want to feel as if they belong yeah. but it's really i would say more like the society itself instead of you shouldn't really blame your parents you should just really accept the situation that you're in now and just accept who you really like just turned out to be. You mm -hmm. can't really change that at this point. So that's why I would say, if I had a choice, I would still be half again. Mm -hmm. Because my whole mindset, like all of my, the way that I think now is just because of me mm -hmm. being like half. I think, yeah, yeah, I do. I do want to be a half again. I know that I had a lot of conflict between Korea and Japan. Mm -hmm. and, but I've been loved by Korean friends and also my Japanese friends and all the other countries. And I think I was able to do that because I was a half Korean and half Japanese. And also, there were my friends who actually who didn't really like about Japan. But just because I got, we got to be along, he started to like Japan. And he said that not all the Japanese people are like that, you know, like, mm. he starts to understand. And that's when I felt like this is something that we could do as a half, you know. I don't know, I, I'm not, this is kind of embarrassing, but I wish I could kind of be a bridge between Korea and Japan. I don't know, like, I wish the half Korean, half Japanese, not only half Korean, half Japanese, but half kids to have a better life mm -hmm. later on. And to, for that, like, it has to be, the world has to be more globalized, more international wise. But I don't know what I can do for it, but mm -hmm. I wish I could do something about it. Like, even a little part of it. Mm -hmm. Yay! Well, thanks for joining us today. It was really fun to talk to you all. Arigatou gozaimashita. Hope you found this discussion insightful. We want to thank all of our participants for openly telling their stories and for the honest discussion. Did you like this new discussion format? Let us know in the comment sections below. We are always trying to bring ordinary people's voices together to discuss social issues. And we feel this open format allows for these kind of candid discussions. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to Asian Boss. And as always, stay curious.